My name is Porik Berry, and I am the CEO of TTI Success Insights here in Ireland. Have you ever made a mistake in hiring? Have you ever made a bad hire? I know I have. And we all know the cost of bad hire. I'm sure you've seen the lists of a multiple of earnings and the damage to the team and the organization and the disruption to management and the difficulties in removing that person and so on. I attended a talk once and a gentleman who had climbed Everest twice was the guest speaker. And at some stage in the during the lunch, one of the participants asked the speaker, what did he learn on the side of the mountain? And he was eating his soup when the question was asked and he did face down and he looked up and he looked at everybody at the table and he said, one man can destroy a team. And he looked back down to his soup. Well, we all sort of paused and realized that what he said was very serious and clearly something had happened on the side of the mountain. So making a mistake can have serious repercussions for the individual himself, for the team and for the organization. But I want you to think also of the time when you made a great hire, somebody who brought all their natural talent to the role, who seemed to fit the role perfectly who added value to the role and everything they did, who fitted with the team and with the organization of the culture. They're a joy, aren't they? They don't need to be managed. They're fully engaged. They're a pleasure to work with. It seems they were made for the job or the job was made for them. So the question we have to ask ourselves when we're hiring is can we get more of the latter and less of the former more people who are naturally engaged who are naturally matched to their roles and less of people who are mismatched with their roles and subsequently fail in that role well the answer of course is yes we can and the question is how and what i'm going to explain to you now is a very very simple process or simple introduction if you wish to the use of psychometrics and science in the recruitment process. What you have to do is match an individual capacity, their capacities, whatever those are, we'll define them in a moment, with the job's requirements. So we start by establishing the job's requirements. We ask ourselves a question, not what does the job do? We ask the question, what is the job responsible for? What are its deliverables? What are the results or outcomes of this role? If this role is executed um, effectively, if there's superior performance in this role, what would it look like? What results will we see? And once we know what those results are that we're looking for from the role, we ask ourselves a question, what's required for those results to be achieved? What hard skills are required? Knowledge? Um, experience, um, education, training, and so on. But also, what soft skills are required? I'm sure you all know the, or heard the old chestnut, um, hire for aptitude and fire for attitude. When we talk about aptitude, what are we talking about? We're talking about these hard skills, the education, the training. We're talking about the things that can be learned. When we talk about attitude, we're talking about things that are somewhat intrinsic to the individual. Things that may be developed, but aren't naturally learned. They are intrinsic. They're things that the person brings naturally to the role. So the secret must be to identify the requirements of the role and match up individuals with those requirements. So how do we do this? It's very simple, really. As we said, you identify the role, you identify what success looks like in that role, you identify what the requirements are, what, what attributes are required for success in that role. 
And you do that in a way that where you can measure the role, where you can also measure an individual and compare them to it. This allows you to screen out candidates in recruitment who are a mismatch for the role and identify the people who have these natural talents, these natural attributes, be it behaviours, be it motivators, be it competencies like leadership or interpersonal communications or whatever. They have these, they have what the role actually requires and so they naturally fit into the role and they feel engaged. They feel the role was made for them. And once we've done this, in the recruitment process, you can then do a development plan for that individual. You can say, here's what the role requires, here's where you are, here's the gap, here's the development plan. You can look at succession planning. You can imagine where that individual would be in 12, 24, 36 months time, compare them to that role, see will they match with that role, what the gaps are, put development plans in place to help that individual, if appropriate. So, the question really is in recruitment, can we use science to help us make better recruitment and selection decisions? And the answer is, yes, we can. We can measure roles and individuals the same way, using psychometric assessments. We can measure them, we can compare them, we can screen out the people who are mismatch, and we can hire the people who match. We can compare them to each other and hire the best people out of that pile of people who match. And having hired them, we can develop and train them and build succession planning and bench strength using these tools. So the question was, can we use science to improve the recruitment and selection process? And I say, yes, we can use science to recruit and select the most effective people, i.e. the people who are best matched to the roles. <laughs>